Good morning, my Renews Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for March 19, 2024, normality returning to Greenshield Primary after threats of violence. A sense of normality has been restored at the Greenshill Primary School after threats that a gunman would attack the institution last Tuesday sparked a fear among students, staff, and parents. Classes were held online for the following three days, with the physical classes resuming on Monday. Some 700 students were sent home after the threats were allegedly issued via WhatsApp. The nearby Greenjill High School also closed early last Tuesday, but classes resumed the following day. Providing an update Monday afternoon, principal of Greenjill Primary, Clayton Smith, said the majority of students have returned to school. We have a good turnout today, um, almost back to normal. And the, the mood is good. The teachers are seemingly all right. We had the peace management initiative coming in and having dialogues and discussions with the children and teachers. We also had a psychologist come in to speak to our teachers. And so the atmosphere is, is a little less tense. I, I am of the view, however, that as we progress, this week is PEP exam, and so the grade, the only the grade six students will be at school, but the other children will be online. So we are looking forward to good relations as we progress. I have advocated that we have a program starting from grade four, where we invite parents and the students, at least one parent on a, perhaps a weekend, and we have a weekend, sorry, and we have uh, teaching, learning, encouragement, motivational techniques. We bring in all the stakeholders who are able to help these students so that they don't uh, degenerate to violence in the future. Because the reality is that the school overall, based off, based off its location, is not necessarily affected in a certain way. It's the communities that are around and that feed the school that causes the problem most of the time. Three cops accused of soliciting cash from motorists acquitted. Three cops accused of soliciting $6,000 from a motorist who committed a road traffic violation in 2019 were recently acquitted. Constable Kevin Fairclaw was charged with corruptly soliciting and accepting money to do an act in the performance of his duty, while Constables Juna Reed and Shadiki Williamson were charged for accepting money to do an act in the performance of their duty. The three were arrested on Sunday, September 8, 2019, following allegations that they solicited money from the motorist. The money was paid over and allegedly shared among the constables. Constables Fairclaw, Williamson, and Reed were placed on suspension after they were charged, but the men who were represented by attorneys Christopher Townsend, John Jacobs, Chadwick Berry, and Charles Williams were acquitted following closing arguments from the legal team on the issue of credibility. Prior to setting the cops free, Chief of Parish Court Judge Chester Crooks found that the complainant was not a credible witness. Jamaican dies after being punched during altercation with a tow truck driver. 61-year-old Carlisle Thomas, a former Jamaican jockey, died after he fell and hit his head after being punched by a tow truck driver during an altercation over parking in Brooklyn, New York. According to reports, Thomas usually parked his motor vehicle at a gas station on Clarkson Avenue near Rockaway, where he paid the U.S. $10 for parking. It is reported that around 8.45 on Saturday night, someone at the gas station called a tow truck to remove Thomas's vehicle. The police said that Thomas attempted to stop his vehicle from being towed when an altercation developed between him and the tow truck driver. It is reported that the tow truck driver 30-year-old Kevin Johnson punched Thomas in the face and he fell to the ground. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Johnson has since been arrested on assault charges. Thomas, identified as a former jockey from Jamaica, was a father, grandfather, and a well-known community member. His death has sparked outrage in the community. His girlfriend, Andrea Gooden, told the news and media outlets that Thomas had an arrangement to park his vehicle at the gas station for $10 if he was unable to find a parking on the streets. 
His daughter, Valerie Simons, according to reports on WPIX TV, has called for the shutdown of the gas station. If lives are being lost over $10, why should they make money here? She asked. Jeremy Thomas, his son, told the television station that he just wants his father back. The gas station owner has his phone number, and he could have just called him if he wanted the vehicle removed, Gooden told the reporters. On the weekend, residents and their family members set up a memorial with candles at the gas station, effectively shutting down its operations. Man on trial for attempting to smuggle eight cell phones and a ganja at a Portmore lockup. The trial of a man accused of attempting to smuggle eight cellular phones, ganja and other contraband in a Portmore lockup is set to continue in the St. Catherine Parish Court on April 24. The accused, Western Hall 34 of Spanish Town St. Catherine, is answering to charges of unlawful possession of property and the possession of ganja. Sergeant Derek Wallace, the first witness in the case that started on Monday before senior parish court judge Yvette Wentworth to Miller, testified that about 2.30 a.m. on March 11, 2023, he was on patrol at the Portmore Police Lockup in St. Catherine. He said upon reaching the rear of the building, he saw Hall taking items from a bag and pushing them through the ventilation of cell number 8 at the station. The accused, he said, was startled when he accosted him and inquired about his actions. Sergeant Wallace searched the bag and found eight cellular phones, five chargers, rizzlers, a quantity of vegetable matter resembling ganja, and a bottle of liquid content resembling rum. He said the accused told him that he was being threatened by a man who advised him to give the items to the prisoners or he would be killed. The police conducted a search of cell number 8 and found three cell phones and a quantity of ganja. Wallace told the court that the items were seized in the presence of the accused, who was cautioned and subsequently charged. Halsey's bail has been extended until the matter resumes in April. Lifeguard accused of strangling brother to death will face a committal hearing. Dialando Bailey, the lifeguard accused of strangling his brother O'Shane Bailey to death in September of last year, is scheduled to undergo a committal hearing on March 20. Bailey, 24, who is from Catherine Mount, St. James, was informed of his hearing date following his appearance in the St. James Parish Court on Monday. During the committal hearing, the judge will review the evidence presented by the prosecution to decide whether Bailey's case should be transferred to the St. James Circuit Court for trial. During Monday's proceedings, the clerk of the court informed the presiding judge, Sasha Marie Smith Ashley, that while the prosecution had been waiting, that while the prosecution had been waiting for the scene of crime report regarding Bailey's case, they should still move forward with the case even in the absence of that specific document. However, Bailey's attorney Henry McCurdy contended that the prosecution's case against his client was weak and cited self-defense as the reason for Bailey's actions at the time of the incident. The matter is long past the committal time. My records show it is from September last year, said McCurdy, noting that the case was first heard in court on September 20, 2023. Nonetheless, Judge Smith Ashley scheduled the committal hearing for March 20 and extended Bailey's bail. Police had reported that the brothers were at home on September 12, when an argument developed over a bill. It escalated into a physical altercation, during which it is alleged that Dialando choked his brother until he became unresponsive. O'Shane was taken to hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Dialando reported the incident to the police, which led to his arrest. Man charged for 2021 murder in Riverton City a 24-year-old man was arrested and charged last Wednesday with the 2021 murder of a businessman on Trelawney Avenue in Riverton City, Kingston. Charged with murder, illegal possession of firearm, and illegal possession of ammunition is Marcus Ellis. He is accused of murdering 58-year-old businessman Norman Dunkley of West Cumberland in Portmore, St. Catherine. Reports from the Duhaney Park Police are that on November 2, 2021, about 10.40 a.m., Ellis and the two accomplices, all armed with handguns, pounced upon Dunkley as he drove his blue Toyota Surf motor truck along the roadway. The men opened the gunfire, hitting him before escaping in the area. 
Dunkley was transported to hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Ellis was taken into custody on Wednesday, March 13, after an alleged confrontation with a lawman in Riverton City. He was charged following a question-and-answer session in the presence of his attorney. His court date is being finalized.